All right, have you ever wondered how colorblindness works? Usually, I think whenever most people think about colorblindness, at least originally, they think about seeing the world in black and white. And that's not exactly how people who have colorblindness actually see the world. It's how a very certain subset do. But uh, for the most part, it usually just means that you're missing out on a certain shade. You know, like red, green colorblind or blue, yellow colorblindness. Um, how that happens is that you're missing a certain cone. And that's gonna be the subject of this video, is gonna be looking at how colorblindness works. So we're gonna start out by talking about what cones do, what they are, what, they, what their function is, and then we're gonna be looking at different kinds of colorblindness, how they work, monochromatism, uh, and then that's gonna lead us into a discussion about the principle of univariance. So why we need all these cones in the first place. And then we're gonna wrap up by looking at night vision and ultraviolet vision and how those um, uh, work for human vision. Okay, so what are cones? You may remember that cones are a type of photoreceptor which are found in the retina. In other words, they are uh, one of the cells that kind of uh, turn uh, raw light waves into action potentials. They turn it, they transduce it into a neural energy that our brain can understand. Now we have two different types of photoreceptors. We have rods and we have cones. Rods are going to be used for kind of uh, night vision, seeing in low levels of illuminance. They're going to be used in black and white, things like that. Um, uh, so they're part of the scotopic visual system. Cones, on the other hand, are part of the, the photopic visual system, and we usually think about them as being associated with color. They're mostly found in the center of the retina. Um, but we have three different kinds of cones. We have an S cone, an M cone, and an L cone. Uh, so, sometimes you'll hear these called blue cone, uh, green cone, and red cone. Those are not the best way to describe these things. Um, but usually, the, so S cones are maximally sensitive towards things on, uh, on, on the, the low end of the light wave spectrum. So they're gonna be most, that, those cones are most sensitive to blue and indigo and purple and things like that. The M cone are gonna be most sensitive towards yellows and kind of greenish. Uh, and the L cone is gonna be most uh, sensitive towards things that are red and further down uh, that color spectrum. Okay, so. Um, we have these three different kinds of cones. Now let's look at exactly what goes on whenever we are uh, seeing colors. So let's take a look at what one of these cones is doing now. What we're looking at here, uh, this kind of graph, on the x-axis, this is the color spectrum. So wavelengths from 700 nanometers to 400, that's the threshold for what the human eye can see. On the y-axis, we have receptor response, or in other words, how fast is that particular cone firing? Um, up, you know, uh, uh, towards the top of this uh, axis, it's gonna be firing at its fastest, and at the bottom, at its lowest. And so this particular cell right here, the M cone, is gonna be most sensitive to greens, as you can see, uh, kind of this, this peaks, at green so it's gonna be firing at its fastest at green at its lowest at reds and blues okay so let's take a look at what this cell does when we start looking at different colors so let's say that we look at this color right here this cyan color what will happen we can kind of trace this up we can see that it's firing about this much so at a moderate level not not too fast not too slow but there's a problem with this because if we imagine you know that this cell is firing at this rate our visual system can't quite make sense of that because um, it may be firing whenever we see cyan but it may also be that we are looking at yellow because the firing rates are going to be the same here and this is part of the principle of univariance this idea that we need multiple cones in order to be able to uh, perceive color because uh, because we can't tell the difference between yellow and blue here what we're actually going to see is gray so people that have uh, one cone are going to see basically these shades of gray now let's try and let's try another example here let's say that you see blue so you're seeing blue and we can trace this up again. So we're, you know, the cell is not firing very frequently at all. Um, but you can see that we're either looking at blue or we might also be looking at orange based on how fast this cell is firing. And the visual system can't make sense of that. And so it's not going to be uh, perceiving any color at all. So this is why folks with one type of cone see only black, white, and shades of gray. They're truly colorblind. They're monochromats. So, let's add a cone type and see what happens. 
Okay, so now we have our good friend the M cone. Let's add in an L cone. So this L cone you can see is sensitive to a different uh, a different pattern of wavelengths here, a different range of them. So if we're going to look at green, let's see what happens. Let's trace it up and see what happens when we look at greens. So for the L cone, you can kind of see that we have a medium response going on here. But for the M cone, it's going to be firing quite frequently. So we're going to have a very high response. And so what we're actually going to see is actually something kind of bluish. Now I know this doesn't quite make sense so far, um, but this is going to be uh, what people who are missing out on S cones see. They only have two cones, and so where these cones tend to overlap over here in this green area, there's going to be a lot of confusion. And so it's really hard to discriminate shades of green in the real world because they overlap so much. So let's take a look at what a different color would look like. So let's take a look at this orange color. So if we were to lay our eyes on this orange, what we would actually see is that the M cone is going to have a very low response. The L cone is going to have a medium response. And so they're not really overlapping all that much. And what we would actually see is something kind of reddish. It's going to be pushed out towards uh, the far boundaries here. So this is blood, uh, sorry, this is blue yellow color blindness, also known as tridenopia. Uh, people who are missing out on their S cone are going to have these kind of exaggerated reds, exaggerated blues, not a whole lot of greens in the middle. Okay, with two cones, still we have some color confusion, so let's add another cone and see what happens. So we got uh, our good friend, the L cone and the M cone. Let's add in our S cone. So now we have all three cones that the normal human eye has. And let's return to our good friend, the green. Uh, so we're going to be looking at this green image again, or this green circle. And you can kind of see the S cone is going to have a very low response. The L cone is going to have a medium response. And the M cone is going to have a very high response. So what you would actually see then is going to be the original color that was put in. Uh, so with three cones, that's the kind of images that we see here. So using three cones, we can easily discriminate colors between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. Without one of those cones, there's some confusion in our visual system, particularly where those remaining cones are overlapping with one another. Okay, so uh, one thing about the principle of univariance that is kind of interesting is that our rods, they only see in black and white, right? They're part, they're part of that uh, scotopic visual system. But they don't necessarily have to see just black and white. The reason why they do see black and white, and we perceive it to be black and white, is because they we only have one kind of rod. If we had three kinds of rods, we would be able to detect colors with them as well, as long as those three different kinds were sensitive to varying levels of the color spectrum or of, of different frequencies of light waves. So, uh, what does that have to do with night vision? Well, if you think about night vision, night vision is just using your rods, right? Your cones aren't active, but your rods are because your rods are very good at seeing things in low levels of illuminance. So, the reason why we can't really detect colors at all at night whenever we're walking around in the woods is because we're just using our rods. And the principle of univariance holds true for this. We only have one kind, so we're seeing in black and white. Uh, there are some animals uh, that do have four types of cones, and as you might expect, their vision is a little bit different than ours. Uh, so for example, crows, um, which actually crows only have three different types, but their cones are sensitive to different levels of, of wavelengths than ours are, which allows them to see UV. And lots of different birds can see in ultraviolet, which is beyond blue. So if we were to move further down that, that spectrum, we get into ultraviolet. We can't see it with the human eye, but birds can. And so crows, for example, uh, even though we see them as black, um, other, other crows and other types of, uh, of birds see them a little bit differently because Crows actually have ultraviolet in their plumage, in their feathers, and so using a different kind of eye that can pick up on those wavelengths sees them as this, you know, much shinier, brighter, more colorful animal uh, than what we perceive with the human eye. So when we think about what we see in the visual world, keep in mind that we're looking at just a very small subset of, you know, the the electromagnetic spectrum or of the, you know, of all possible light waves. Um, and if you are missing out on just one cone, that can change your entire view of the world completely.